Good morning and welcome to the chair. My name is Amy Bauman. I'm with For His Glory Ministry, and this is our weekly teaching. We come together each week, figure out what chair we're sitting in, look at God's word, apply it to our lives, hopefully becoming more encouraged and more like Jesus. But if this is your first time joining us today, I'm so glad that you found us online, and I pray that today will be a blessing. I have a question for all of us today. Why do we pray? And I want to have some real talk and and look at some real issues surrounding that and also understand that maybe in today's day, it's never been more important for us to pray than right now. So I want to look at that today. I want to talk about that. But before we get started, let's open all of this up with prayer. Father God, I thank you for today. And Lord, I thank you for this topic. And it's challenging, I know, as we sit in different chairs and we look at prayer, that it's not always something that's easy to do. It's something that we want to do. It's something that we hope to do. It's something that we sometimes take maybe a few minutes and say a few words, Lord, but it's challenging. And as we look at the shape of the world and we are out of words, we don't know what to say. We don't know how to pray. I pray that today will be an eye opener for the realness and the importance of praying not just because of the day that we are in, but because that is what you call us to do. And that is such a key thing in having a relationship with you is by praying, is by having that conversation, is by being real with you. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have for us. I pray for a fresh anointing that I will speak your truth with love. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So real talk today. Real talk about prayer. Why do we pray? The importance of praying. Why sometimes it's hard to pray. This is something I've asked people, right, as I'm walking alongside of them, uh, either mentoring them or discipling or counseling, is asking about prayer. How is your prayer life? Is it hard to pray? Are you, what are your challenges? And a lot of people have said that prayer is challenging because it, it feels like you're having a conversation with someone who's not there. We can't see God, right? And so praying to someone that we can't see can first and foremost seem a little bit daunting, a little, a little challenging. And Maybe conversation with a real live person is hard, let alone trying to talk with someone that you can't physically see with your own eyes. And so that's one real issue that we struggle with today. Another reason that we struggle with prayer is that when you look at people today, everyone is busy. Everyone is just trying to get through the day, trying to do whether they work outside of the home or they work at home. They're trying to raise a family. They're trying to, you know, help their family, whether that's kids or husband. Um, They're struggling. They're, They're just struggling. And so trying to make time or find time to sit down with God and pray or do a devotional or read his word is challenging. And my husband and I, last weekend, we went to a laundromat and we have this really oversized comforter that needed to be washed and it just won't fit in our regular wash machine. And so we went to the laundromat and we're sitting there waiting. My husband had picked up a magazine and uh, I'm, I'm looking around the laundromat and absolutely everyone is in this position. Everyone was on their phones. Everyone was looking at their phone. And 
I started thinking about it and I'm like, what did we used to do <laughs> when there wasn't a phone? What did we, how did we used to wait? How did we used to spend our time? And I wondered in that moment, I mean, when didn't we have phones? And I looked it up and in 1973, the Motorola Dyna TAC 8000 was invented. It was like this flip phone. And in 1983, it became the first commercially available handheld cellular mobile phone. So what is that? 40, 40 years technology, right? 40 years technology has gone from no phone to everyone has a phone, everyone's on their phone, and it is amazing. And I'll be the first to say that I love my phone, right? I love it because it enables me to stay connected with my family, um, but that I can do so much of what I need to do with the ministry on my phone, whether that's posting or talking to people or uh, communicating video, all of those things. However, it is a big distraction. And you can lose time by being on your phone and scrolling and looking at reels and videos. And, and before you know it, 20 minutes has gone and you have just looked at absolutely <laughs> nothing except people doing crazy things or videos or whatever. And, and so we have to be mindful and disciplined that if we want to spend time with the Lord today, if we want to pray and take time out of the busy schedules, we have to be intentional. We have to be diligent and we have to be aware that this is one way that the enemy has gotten in and has pulled people and distracted people by using their phone all ages, all across the world. So we've admitted that Maybe it's challenging to pray to someone that we can't see. We've admitted that maybe it's busy, busyness. Busyness is why I don't go to the Lord more often. And I think even sometimes we can overcomplicate things. We can say, well, I've got to be in a special place to pray, or I have got to do this to pray, or... I need to go here and pray. Truly, those are lies from the enemy. And we don't have to use big words. We certainly don't have to be in a certain place. And all the Lord is really wanting from us is that relationship, that conversation. But why do we pray? Why is it important to overcome that feeling of awkwardness and make time to pray each day? I want to camp on that weird relationship for a minute. Sorry, that word relationship for a minute. When you have a relationship with someone, that's how you learn more about them. So my husband and I communicate um, getting married for the for the first time and and joining our family and the kids and all of that communication wasn't one of our strongest things and so we struggled with communication um, and that's something that we have learned uh, to work on and to do so communication has gotten better in our marriage but we communicate with each other to find out how our day is gone uh, how we're doing you know what we're feeling what needs to be done to share life with each other and we get to know each other better and what we're going through and, and the things that we need by talking it out. And it's the same with God. He's wanting to have a relationship with us and in, and in doing that, we need to be able to have a conversation. He wants to hear how we're doing. He wants to hear what we need. He wants to hear when we're going through something challenging. And what we forget is that it's as easy as breathing. It's as easy as saying, thank you, Lord, for today. 
It's as easy as saying, I need you now. You could be at work struggling with all these piles of folders on top of your desk and deadlines and your boss is coming over and saying, hey, I need this in five minutes. And all you really need to do in that moment is not go off somewhere private, not come up with these big long words and, you know, a prayer that someone gave you from the internet. All you need to say is, I need you, Lord. Please help me get this done. It's as easy as breathing. And and I think sometimes we overcomplicate it. We struggle and, and the enemy jumps on that bandwagon and tells us, well, you don't have time to pray for the Lord and all the the reasons, the Rolodex of reasons that he can give us as to why we shouldn't freely approach the throne of God and make our requests and talk with him. The Bible encourages us to pray and tells us in verses like Colossians 4.2, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And Philippians 4.6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then James 5.16, therefore, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So if prayer is powerful and effective, and the Bible tells us that it is, why aren't more people doing it? Maybe the enemy of our soul knows how powerful prayer is. And so he's very quick to discourage us and detour us and give us things to look at and make our attention go off the path. Maybe he's working to distract us and detour us and debilitate us. You see, prayer allows us to worship and praise the Lord. Prayer is how we communicate with God. Prayer will enable us to participate in God's works. Prayer gives us power over evil. And prayer allows us to stand in the gap and intercede on behalf of others. Prayer is a mighty and powerful thing. And prayer is the one thing that we need to do to defeat the enemy. You see, we can't do it in our own strength. We can't go out and and do these certain things physically that will affect the enemy. No, it's all about praying in the spirit and praying against the enemy and lifting up our prayers so that God can work and move. And the enemy knows that. The enemy knows the power of prayer. And so that's why he's going to do whatever he can to tell you that it's uncomfortable. He's going to try to distract you and detour you with things of this world so that you don't have time to pray. And he's going to fill your head with, well, you need to do it this way. And it's really hard. And I don't think you have time today to pray to God. We need to know that prayer is important and powerful and integral in our relationship with God. And that maybe right now, the one thing we need to do more than anything else in the world today is to pray, is to offer up our prayers to God, saying, Lord, we're struggling here on earth right now. As you look at the world and the shape and the the wars and the famine and the people that are dying, And the people that are struggling, Lord, we lift it up to you. Help us to return to your path. We pray for each other, to strengthen each other, to encourage each other. Our prayers activate, activate God to work and move because we're we're doing what he has called us to do in his word. We need to stand together to cancel the plans of the enemy and to communicate with God and to let him know that we love him, that we 
want to have a relationship with him and that we're not too busy for him. Or maybe today, and I think this is another thing that is challenging, is maybe today you just don't have the words. Maybe today, no matter what chair you're sitting in, you are spent. You have tried in the past praying to God. You turn on your news and you just don't know what to say regarding the situation of the world. And so you're sitting there today watching this video and you're saying, I don't really have the words, Amy. I don't know what to pray anymore. Then I want to encourage you to do the same thing, to use the same words that the Lord gave to the disciples when they asked him in Luke 11, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And this is what he said. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. If you don't know what to pray today, let these words be what you pray. Can you imagine what our world would look like if we could bring heaven to earth? If the things that were happening in heaven could be happening in the earth today? If we could all give our reverence to the Lord, asking him for our daily provision and forgiving those in our lives who have trespassed against us? Can you imagine the power of just that prayer? If that was the only prayer that we ever prayed from now until Jesus returned, can you imagine the work that would be happening in the spirit realm, ushering in those words for God to work and move? Why should we pray? It's one of the most important things we can do as believers to grow our relationship to God. Prayer is talking to God. And when you are in a relationship with someone, you need to communicate with them. My husband and I needed to work on our communication when we were first married because that's how our relationship needed to work. We needed to be able to talk to each other and talk things out. And it's the same with God. It's not one-sided. It's two-sided. We talk to God and God talks to us. And we need to create a space to do both, to pray and to listen. But more importantly, we need to navigate our relationships. We need to navigate our daily steps using the biblical guidelines that God gives us praying, reading his word, trusting in him. We need to pray according to his word. And it's never been a more critical time than now to effectively pray to God, not only for ourselves, but the people around us and the people that are struggling in the world where we can literally turn on our televisions and see the struggle, see the trouble and the war see where people are losing their lives, that are losing their homes, that are losing hope, we can stand in the gap for them. We can pray for them. We can lift them up to the Lord. And we need to make sure that our lives are aligned with God's word and live out what we say we believe. James was right when he said we need to submit ourselves to God, to resist the devil and he will flee from you, to come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. We do that by praying, by having a conversation, by talking with God. God and God alone is the only answer 
to every question that we are struggling with today. When we're uh, looking to our world and how will we go on and how will things change and how will people come closer to him? How will they know who they are in Christ? The answer is God. The answer is in God's word. And we help facilitate that by aligning our lives with his word and lifting up those prayers to God for him to work and move as only he can. When we spend time with him, we will learn from him and learn to walk with him one step at a time, one day at a time. Whatever you need today, whatever chair you're sitting in, God is waiting to hear from you and to help you. So let us lift up our praise, lift up our petition, lift up our problems. Let us lift up our prayers. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we have a tendency sometimes in our humanness to overcomplicate things, to make things harder than they really have to be. And all you are asking us to do is to come to you and share with you what we need, to talk to you like a friend, to come to you as a father, to just speak openly with you. And it's, it's not hard. It's not challenging, but we seem to listen to the lies from the enemy. We overcomplicate things and we distance ourselves from you. And I just ask today that, that you will reunite us with you, that we will remove the obstacles, the challenges, the things, the, the misconceptions, the things that we believe about prayer. We'll strip those all down and we will look at it once again as just an opportunity to come to you and exhale out gratitude. Exhale out, Lord, I need you. Lord, I love you. Help me get through this. Let that be the beginning steps, Lord. And I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name that he cannot manifest in our situations, in our prayer lives, Lord. And we just thank you that because of prayer, we are able to, to throw him down at your feet. And I thank you, Lord, that when Jesus died on the cross, that that curtain that was torn in two from the top to the bottom gave us full access to your throne room, that we can come to you anytime with our requests, with our desires, with our needs, with our love, that Jesus made a way for us to do that. Let us be mindful of that today. Let us remember that today, Lord, that you've made a way for us to have that relationship with you. Let us receive the gift. Let us take the opportunity. Let us be a people who pray. We love you and praise you and thank you. And all God's people said, amen. I want to leave you with this short video. It's kind of a perfect way to wrap up today's topic, but I pray that it will be a blessing and a great reminder for you the rest of the week why we pray. But thanks so much for being here today and for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed. For centuries, Christians have been known as men and women of prayer, people who lift up their cares and concerns to the Father in heaven. Why is that? Why do we pray? We pray because it aligns the mind of the Christian with the will of Christ. We pray because Jesus commanded us to pray, at all times, in all places. We pray because the God who knows all and sees all, hears all. We pray because it is the blessed link between human weakness and divine omnipotence. We pray not because it is some religious rule, but because the Lord is God. We pray because it is the most simple and practical way to say, I am not God. We pray, not because it is a burden to us, but because it liberates us from all other burdens. We pray, because it is exactly what the devil does not want us to do. We pray, because God can do more in five seconds than we can do in five years. 
We pray because it is the one thing that supersedes everything else on our to-do list today. We pray because we are too busy not to pray. We pray because somewhere, sometime, someone prayed for us. And we pray because the greatest tragedy of the Christian life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Prayer is powerful. That's why we pray.